Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Get Set Go Beyond Sports with me, Sonali Gupta. Once again, we have stories and we have people from sports who make these stories so interesting, so motivating, and so inspirational. There is always so much that we learn and we go back from after hearing each story. Today, we have with us someone not only inspiring, but I think really someone who defies uh, fear, who defies, um, uh, you know, adrenaline rush, who's so adventurous. And it is my pleasure to introduce him to all of you. Vishwaraj Jadeja, India's first long distance ice speed skater. Hello and Hi. welcome Vishwaraj. <laughs> Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, I uh, am going to continue a little bit more. He has yeah. more than 65 national records. Some of his notable records would be for the fastest Indian for the 3, 5 and 10K long ice distance speed skating. He has also participated in the 2017 <clears throat> excuse me, Asian Games all over the distances. Another record that he holds is competing in over 200 races for India, to name a few. He has now been training for the 2022 Winter Olympics and the Asian Games. He switched from roller skating to ice skating and has used his platform and stood in the spotlight to discuss the problems with sporting industry, his experience of playing an unconventional, unconventional sport in India, and also how one can keep a mindset for winning and giving one's best. Today, we are going to ask him all of these questions and so many more. Once again, a warm welcome, Vishwaraj. Thank you so much for having me. That was a quite an introduction. You've done your research, so that's very good. I appreciate Thank it very much. You. <laughs> uh, it's, um, yeah, it, it's at times when you're doing such podcasts or interviews with uh, platforms in India, uh, they sometimes are very uh, unaware of winter sports or adventure sports in India. I mean, their hearts are in the right place, but they forget to do the research. And that's where sometimes I get a little bit uneasy with that uh, mindset. And that's something which I'm very appreciative of what uh, you've been. Yeah, you've done your research and you followed up and that's fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Vishwaraj, it's a question that I ask everyone. And I'm yeah. going to ask and start with you. What made yeah. you choose sports in general? And then what made you choose skating and then move uh -huh. from roller skating to ice skating? I think I was born into a family, uh, I mean, not, I think, I mean, I was born into a family of sports people. Uh, my aunt was skating for the national team for figure skating in 83. Wow. Uh, she went to the world championships for figure skating, roller figure skating. My father was national champion uh, roller skating. Another aunt was doing the same. So it was, I think, uh, and I grew up in my household with all these medals and certificates from my aunts and my father and my, uh, yeah. Oh, to the whole family basically uh, so there was like a certain amount of expectation in the air that if you take up sports you better be good at it otherwise don't bother you know go educate yourself or something and uh, but so that, that was it and from the word goes there was no pressure in the house per se but the understanding obviously was that if you're doing this then you might as well do it properly you know because we've had your aunts and your father doing this uh when we had nothing in that sense like financially there's like people in india don't get into sports for financial gains to be honest right uh right. you know it's for the love of the sport love of the country you wearing that indian jersey and you know representing your country and the world stage i think that is what drives and motivates all of us to put our country on the map international map you know so right. i think right. uh so, so that was one of those things and Yes, yeah, so th that was it. So for me, the benchmark itself was at least a national gold medal. I mean, if you're going to take up sports or, you know, whatever sports, it doesn't matter roller skating or hockey or whatever, but like you have to at least be on the national top, you know, and not just for, for a year, you have to do it for a prolonged period of time. Only then it makes sense. So right. yeah, that was pretty much it. And I was a hyperactive tell me kid. Something, so, yeah. Vishwaraj, and what, what really comes to my mind with, with what you've uh, mentioned is, um, was it really um, inspiring and motivating to be on the top just like the rest of the family? 
or did you also feel um, a sense of um, pressure to actually perform just like them, get the medals, be on the top? Like, so, so what kept you going to do that? I think it was more the responsibility I felt that uh, mm -hmm. it's the legacy of the family. Uh, right. uh, we, my grandfather always ta taught us that your deeds will be remembered more than the buildings you make. You know, so right. so that is something which was very well instilled in us from the be from the beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. So so that that was it. So for me, for it was it was not no brainer. Like yeah, if I'm doing the sport, I might as well. And then for me, one thing I realized that. Uh, the they, none of them have been to the Olympics. So I like you know what, I'm gonna go to the Olympics. So there was no pressure per se. There was just a sense of responsibility. Like yeah, if I'm doing this, so it has to be done, you know, significantly. And you have a limited amount of time on this planet, in this world. So you want to make the most of it. Uh, so that's what I'm still doing. Tell me, tell me, Vishwaraj, how did you then make the shift? from roller skating to ice skating what prompted you or what sort of uh, you know what so, what fascinated you and so ice skating is so for example the biggest problem was or the biggest challenge at the time was that roller skating uh, or the form of roller skating which i was doing which was inline speed skating uh, is not in the olympics and by then i had already given my given 10 years of my life uh, to a sport and ideally when you do that and in the sense that I was in the top of the country, being selected in the Indian team in the top two ranking. Basically, by then, by by 2008 September, I was that's when I basically shifted to uh, ice skating officially. To be honest, I mean that's how yeah that was the idea. But the thing is, uh, you, you spend ten years to give a sport to you give your ten years to a sport. That sport is not in the Olympics. Uh, you've represented your country also at various levels, Asian Asian Championships. Uh, and then the world championships subsequently, and then even when uh, world championships 2008, when I did the roller skating, I mean inline speed skating, uh, world championships, we realized that uh, well, I saw the level in Europe, and it was in Spain, so I saw the level in Europe, and I was like, well, to compete with the best in the world, you have to be training with the best in the world, otherwise you will keep on competing with Asians, with Indians, and then we we'll keep on beating each other, but then that doesn't mean it'll take you to a higher level. You can become the best of the country because you're competing with the best of the, your country. But then internationally, I did not see at the time uh, a possibility uh, to basically, yeah, you know, uh, to go to the Olympics. I mean, the final frontier is the Olympics. And that is what it is right. all about. And, and uh, <clears throat> then I saw a lot of roller skating, I mean, inline speed skaters moving to uh, long track ice skating. And then I was like, well, right. all right, this is, this is what's up then. And uh, that's what I did. I just uh, decided, I mean, basically figured out a way uh, that, well, if I want to go ice skating, if I want to go long track speed skating, it has to be in the Netherlands. Uh, and it has to be with some of the best coaches, at least the best coaches, you know, uh, out there. Uh, right. And so my journey began. And that was it. Basically, right. one day I was going through the newspapers in the morning uh, and it said study in Denmark. I basically to open the atlas map of Europe, like Denmark, Netherlands, close enough, right? Took a student loan, uh, started getting myself the process of getting a visa for education and all of that. And well, the next thing I know, I'm in Denmark ska skating with the local club over there and studying computer science. Wow. That was pretty much it. I mean, obviously the, there's more more specifics to that, but yes. that is probably that, that is probably for the book. But uh, but it's just yeah, it, it, it was. I think for me, it was a simple choice and a decision that this is what we are going to do. This is what has to be done. Uh, and I think early on, already in my life, we, uh, we were taught to set goals and then you go after them. And right. that's what you have to do. And that's what so I tell did. us a little bit more, uh, Vishwara, especially for people who are hearing us, people uh, who hopefully will be more inspired. Um, how did you go about setting your goals? What kept you going? Uh, you know, like, um, it is very difficult as a child, it is rather easy to pick up a spot, 
but it is very mm. difficult to keep the passion going especially when you have hurdles you have had setbacks in terms of a lot of injuries um mm. how have you been able to bounce back in in short times and also how have you been able to mentally set yourself up every time to keep going with your goal to keep um to keep yourself motivated what has been your mental chatter Mm, yeah, it, it's interesting because, like, if you ask me this question now, I have like an elaborate answer. But if you would ask me this question ten years ago, I would not have been able to give you an answer because I also didn't know then how do I manage because there was nothing, not nothing of sorts of mental health to be looked at or addressed. You know, so I think it's for me. Let's say let's let's say, look at my process. I, for example, uh, at the time, we are crazy uh, high energy teenagers. who have achieved a certain level of success locally uh being a state champion for 3 years uh you know for roller skating and obviously things going wrong things constantly go wrong that is a part of life in general i think we have to accept that so for me the biggest aspect was to embrace the situation and then make the most of the situation also of that situation so i think that helped me a lot uh to understand we, we were we were grew, we grew up in the 90s in ahmedabad in gujarat you know those were trying times for everybody involved uh so then we had the earthquake so, so it was just uh life in general was very challenging and then sports made everything seem so normal at the time right so right. then you like you would do everything for that like hey if i keep doing sports everything will be fine that's it so for my understanding right. still date is like if i'm good i'm fast on the ice track everything will be fine and that's it right. so i keep it simple i don't want to complicate it too much uh i actually sorry i try how, to keep it how simple. how did you then kind of also my question was that you've had some major mm-hmm. injuries throughout your career how yeah. did you bounce back from them and how did you use like your injuries to go forward and propel forward I I always go in trouble trouble I always go in trouble shooting mode. So if I have an injury, I think about how I'm going to solve this problem. So problem solving is basically that's it and I focus my all my efforts on solving this particular problem. And I keep on doing that until it's not solved. And if it is not solved, then I know okay it's not so far it has worked for me that it has been able to be solved and you need a lot of patience. So infinite patience my uncle taught me something about infinite patience. for success so <clears throat> that is something which uh, has been with me still uh, and then you know that's it so you just focus on how to solve a particular question and a problem and that's it and i do not let negativity come near me that much obviously it is depressing and it is sad that i cannot uh, walk or i cannot move but uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel which is something you have to remember uh and you have to believe in yourself i think that is one thing which i have realized also over the years that self belief beyond reason so that kind of helps you in tackling problems and situations even during races you know you have in those race conditions you need to really uh have that uh mindset that presence of mind to be able to uh you know tackle those things so so i think if you cannot deal with things or th- be with the pressure of the track then you will never be able to deal with the pressure on the track uh so i think uh, that's it then that you keep on reminding yourself that i'm 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 35 now and i've been into sports for 25 years now at level at a higher level so and there is no time i mean sometimes i feel like downtime is also downtime for a reason you get to reflect reorganize and optimize your resources and go after your goals again and right. uh, yeah So, so for me i think since the day one i mean it's always been about uh problem solving forcing right. fo- focusing on the positives no matter what happens it's just you have to focus on the positives otherwise right. I, I, and i mean if you don't then nobody else will if you don't believe in your right. goals nobody else will uh if you don't take yourself seriously nobody else will so i think that is one thing which i have been you know very very sure of and i try to uh instill that uh in my way of being day to day and yeah so you spoke about 
different places, different regions, different stuff. And, and you've been in this sport now and into mm. sports for just so many years. How did, mm. how do you acclimatize yourself with different uh, regions? And how do you start your training? How do you mentally or physically start so, preparing yourself? Uh, yeah, so, so acclimatization. So for example, when I started in Denmark and then I actually had to get to the Netherlands, you know, so the Netherlands is like 100,000 kilo, thousand kilometers from uh, Denmark. Uh, so first three years I was in Denmark, figured a way out, like, you know, I did some local races. Uh, I got identified by a Dutch uh, journalist. He did a big story in the Dutch magazine for speed skating. Uh, and Holland is like, uh, Netherlands is basically like cricket, uh, long track ice skating over here in the Netherlands is like what cricket is to India. Basically, that wow. is the craziness behind, around it. Yeah. Like if, if this year we had the polar vortex passing by and all the water bodies were frozen, lakes, rivers, everything. And the whole country was out there skating, you know, on the ice. Like just the way we go play cricket in the big grounds on Sundays. That was it. Four days, everything shut down, people went skating. You know, wow. so they, they also have this legendary race of 11 cities where 11 cities are connected with a canal, with little rivers, and they go skating on it. It's like 100 and something kilometers race. Uh, and last time it happened was 96. But the still the club is still on and then the foundation is still on and they are working, you know, in keeping and developing the sport. So I think uh, there, there is a lot of aspects to it. For example, India, the sports culture itself is very or very, in the culture which I grew up in was very different. Uh, obviously, I was very like, fortunate to be in the family I was born in or I have been born in where our outlook on sports is very different to compare to my friends. Like, for example, I didn't have good friends until I was 16. You know, because I was busy with being, being, uh, being, I was busy sporting. Uh, right. So, and yeah, b basically, you have to have an open mind. So, that's for sure. Hmm. You really and, and, and I'm going to ask you this that when you were growing up and when you said that you didn't even have that many friends and stuff like that, mm -hmm. again, even when you were growing up, roller skating by itself was not as popular. And, uh, and even today, ice skating, long distance ice skating is not as popular as much as, yes, um, you mentioned it about being extremely popular in the Netherlands or, or probably a European country. But in our country, we still are not um, aware. Like you said, we are, um, you know, largely um, cricket based or perhaps other now other sports coming in. But winter sports, winter games, winter Olympics, uh, is still very niche also possibly cause it takes a certain geographic con climate condition to be able to play that sport so which is where when you were mentioning earlier uh, and i would love to hear the story about how you have this little um, identity on on your head that is an honor for you uh, so how is it that we have such a small footprint in winter games in general um that is a very complex question uh, where I think I have a lot of opinion offline of the record uh, instead of <laughs> on the record. It will get me into trouble, a lot of trouble. But right. uh, I would say uh, over the years, um, let's say cricket, for example, yeah? the cricket found uh, the cricket BCCI has done a great job of cultivating, okay. nurturing, nurturing, nurturing the sports and its athletes and its people. Uh, so that is something we can really learn. All the other sports in India can learn how BCCI has taken care of its sports and how it values itself and its sports and its people. Uh, having said that, <clears throat> winter sports in India has infinite potential. Uh, for example, there, there is Linda Pace who has done seven winter, uh, seven, seven summer Olympics, right? Uh, the right. only other person who has even come close to this, those many Olympics is Shiva Keshwan. He's a winter Olympian. He's done yes. six winter Olympics for India. So I yes. think uh, that itself tells you, and he's from Himachal Pradesh, by the way. So yes. that that itself tells you that there are motivated athletes in India for sure. There is no, right. we don't have a shortage of motivated athletes. Now we come to infrastructure right. and administration and management and so on and so forth. So all of those aspects uh, need a lot of working uh, right. where now at least there are right questions being asked for it. That is what I'm very happy about. I wish these right. questions were asked when I started out by the administration, by the government, local governments, and all, all of those things. Uh, again, it is niche sports for now, but in five years, 10 years time, it won't be. Uh, and there's like 10 different states in the country where winter sports is possible. How many states do we have? Uh, 30 states, I think, around 30 states. Close to 29. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, twenty nine thirty states. Like all, this is like an all air question. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm just giving you like a like give to to help you um, imagine and give you like a little bit yeah. of outline that the potential India has for winter sports and adventure sports is around ten right. to eleven states in the country have mountains or hills right. or ghats. Right. You know, uh, and in the and a lot of them receive snowfall, and a lot of them have the topography where winter sports is possible. Right. Directly, like if, if off the top of my head, I can say that whole belt. Uh, from Uttarakhand, Him, uh, Himachal Pradesh, uh, right. and Ladakh, Jammu. Right. You know, so all these four or five states directly, and in the east you have Sikkim and all of those places. Like they all have the topography and the uh, uh, sit, uh, uh, situation where we can have into sports. We can have Olympians are already coming out of Himachal Pradesh. So yes. I think it is just a matter of time when we are able to invest in the right uh, resources and are uh, I mean more mindful. uh efforts are made uh from the side of the government obviously and the locals you know they are doing that it's not like they're not they don't want they want to uh so i think that's that is one thing and like people like shiva and the other other winter olympians who've already been there and uh, we are basically coming together trying to form one community of winter sports and we're trying to you know make sure that a system is play in place from day one Right. I always be get I always get the question like why is it so challenging? Vishwa, Vishwa, I don't think it's so challenging to be a winter athlete from India. And like that's my point. If I'm the only one, that means there's a whole world of opportunities out there. You know exactly. the amount of things we can do. So right. yeah, and that that is it. So basically, uh, <clears throat> it is challenging. Don't get me wrong. Um, right. And with with my 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 story so far or my journey so far. everything you can imagine could have gone wrong has gone wrong two times you know not just one twice but i'm still here we're still standing and we still are uh, pers- in pursuit so this this also the cap uh, it was given to me at the winter games uh, asian winter games uh, and uh, uh, yeah it's it's a himachal cap and himachal has been like in the forefront for winter sports when it when it when you talk about Winter sports athletes who have been to the Olympics and stuff like that. So it was, and, and since then, this for me it has at least become the symbol of winter sports in India, and that's why I I end up wearing it during interviews or podcasts like this. Amazing. Tell me something. Yeah. Um, in your initial days, were apart from the trouble with regards to uh, probably training and equipment and uh, like you said conditions. Um, What about funding? What about sponsorship? Uh, what about mm-hmm. uh, you know recognition or or representation? Uh, the government support. How has all of these things played out for you? I, I think one thing I realize is when athletes are asked questions about how do you manage funding, what about the government support? I like nobody goes and asks the government this. Like why are they supporting right. the athletes? So I would right. say like ten ten journalists should go and ask them about this like and they always get a generic answer. So I think with the government I don't have any qualms. I mean if they are able to provide us with better roads, uh, better hospitals, healthcare, women security, and education for everyone, I will right. not mind if they are not. You know if if those things are solved, then I will like okay fine up my this is my turn now. But they are still not able to do that much properly. Then how right. can they how can I expect as funding from them? You know right. that is one basic right. very very activist answer. Uh, so other aspect aspect of it is, uh, let's say, what is it? Um, yeah, 13 years of ice skating now. Mm. Uh, Gujarat government, let's say, has been there over the years uh, in one form or another, uh, providing the funding or like some part of right. the funding. Right. You are there, uh, but right. you have to understand, Indian athletes, even for Summer Olympics, who are well funded, super well funded, mm. they are finding mm. it hard to even get to the qualification limits or qualifiers. you know and right. then uh, and and to you have to keep the uh, now change the perspective you don't have infrastructure and still have to survive so i think uh funding has been a problem from day one mm. it still is no get me wrong mm. absolutely but uh, there are foundations and like because i have been around for a long time it, it is now possible that i can like this year will be my first year in what so many years that most of the funding or uh, would be taken care of Uh, right. But there have been times when I have had to sleep on those railway stations or bus stations, you know, because hey, uh, what am I going to do next? You don't know. And there have been times when I have called an official who had committed to me that hey, we are going to fund you with this. I call him, 
and he's like hey the funds are not there what can we do oh, yeah we decided not to give it to you anymore so stuff right. like that or there's also like questions sometimes like oh you're not indian anymore because you've li- lived so far away i'm like no that's not true you know i spent a lot of time abroad yes but i also spent equal i mean i spent a lot of time in india also and just because we don't have infrastructure does that mean that i should be in india just to make you feel good about it so i think right. uh, funding is a problem uh, but you accept the fact that the funding is a problem and embrace the fact that funding is a problem right then you'll find a way out i'm not i'm, right. I'm not the whole sit and complain like a funding is a problem no, i'll go and find solutions and that right. is my i think that is my strength i remember a journalist in the netherlands had asked him once that hey wish must be my coach him he, he said like the journalist asked him like wish must be such a talented skater him goes yeah no he's not talented at all like, what do you mean you've been coaching him for 10 years now oh yeah yeah so his talent is he doesn't give up i think that is why he will make it that's it <laughs> so i think i think that is one thing and yeah i mean funding is funding you know it's never there you have to go and find out right. how to get it no one's going to come and give you the money right. you know right like now i have this year i was very lucky that sports authority of gujarat uh shabank for good uh foundation uh and uh, dream 11 sports foundation these three different organization one government two private or i mean two non government organizations right have basically given me the freedom to just have offered me like hey we want to help you out we want to support you tell us how wow but that that means that i have to provide a day to day uh schedule i have to provide right. a day to day plan a three a short term plan a long term plan only then foundations right. and governments will you know come for like you just can't the one day you get them like oh by the way government doesn't give me money but have you ever gone to the government right. with a plan you have or have you per- okay i had to lobby with the government i had to lobby for 7 years but that also right. gave me a lot of time to develop myself and obviously i make sure that my cost of living stays very very minimal or very small and to right. me, i mean for me uh, because i've been in the ne- netherlands the culture around speed skating has been very good i mean it's very popular right. and it's you know culturally very much aware so right. i get by and i i can survive but right. if i was in america for example or somewhere else it was not possible at all so right yeah right so i think what you mentioned is um, you know it's quite insightful because like you said you know that everyone sort of will just get up one fine day and say hey i need to get funded and i need to get sponsored but there is mm. so much that goes beyond just asking it out and like you said i'm sure yeah. this is going to be quite a tip for a lot of other people out there who are looking for funding yeah. especially in niche sports that mm. uh, you also from your end have to be very mm. accountable for that funding right because it's yeah, not yeah. about just taking especially, the money it's also it's, it's, yeah exactly especially when you are a minority you are more responsible and accountable for everything you're doing <laughs> <laughs> that was no 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 okay yeah, I'm, I'm 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah but then yes you know i mean we, yeah. we we use the word niche uh yeah. but uh, yeah that's how it is but so in your blogs and your social media handles you've said that now you're preparing for the 2022 winter olympics um the current world situation in terms of our quarantine the lockdown the covid how has that affected your um training or how has it affected mm. you in the sport and how are you now using this opportunity or this time to actually train further so uh, i never stopped training for the olympics so i've started out the journey in pursuit of the winter olympics so every day every moment every hour i spend uh, is in preparation towards that so now obviously because of the lockdown and pandemic to be honest it has not affected my preparation that much uh, in fact we've developed more skill and technique this year than i have in the last 3 years but that also has to do with no injuries and stuff like that so it's you know but training in isolation is really works for me a lot uh, and repetition day in, day in and day out everything so all days to me are identical now which is very good uh, helps me focus more uh, and the training plan is there it's made by vimnu amjad the champion maker so there's no i have no doubts in the training program itself in fact i sometimes tend to make it a bit more harder and vim says man you need to rest a little bit also so obviously <clears throat> we have a plan in place 
uh, which has worked in the past uh, for win and uh, for the world champions champions and olympic champions is produced in the past so i'm very confident in that uh, now the idea is to follow, be able to follow it day in and day out uh, that's it and pandemic well pandemic is there obviously it's there i'm not saying it's not there my brother had covid so my family has been affected by it uh so you just have to make mentally you are calm uh you embrace other again i go to my fundamentals you embrace the situation then everything is possible there are infinite possibilities out there so yeah i think uh, that's it i'll i'll keep focused on the goal at hand i'll keep focused on the job at hand and, and that's it so i guess if i'm able to do those many things uh then it should be fine right I make it sound very asking. simple. I I make it sim- sound very simple and calm. But you have to understand, there has been a work of what thirteen years behind this, so I can say right. these things now. So don't get yeah. me wrong. I'm not undermining well, it. I'm not taking um, it for granted at yes. all. So, and I I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of people who are hearing you would actually take it as um you know a motivation to kind of know that look, it just takes that much. It is a journey, but uh, you can get to where you are today, and I'm sure that's going to be inspiring. It's uh, definitely going to fuel a lot more passion in people. Um, mm-hmm. And I want to talk about uh, this whole adventure uh, adventure aspect of uh, skating on thin ice. I mean, um, it is definitely not uh, fun and games. It is extremely mm-hmm. difficult. It is um, yeah. also. threatening life threatening uh, yeah. how did you do this and what made you do this and what's the thrill i mean you know so, how, how, so in how was it so the, the initial idea was that in 2018 i go to the winter olympics and i'm done and i go on towards to other things but uh, 2018 obviously because it was the olympic year it was the year which was the hardest funding wise uh, so i was very stressed because you're going to the olympic year with a big debt uh and that's why and you have a lot of people looking at you your performance so that in anticipation that i will perform i started training harder and harder and started to take more and more risk what does that do you push yourself over the boundaries over the limits which is fine but at some point it breaks so i ended up having three or four three crashes proper crashes and i could suddenly could not walk crack patella uh, you know dislocated ribs torn tissue in the back so it was just that was it that was the end of my 8 years or whatever years of that towards that goal it's devastated things we've wa- been through me and my coach together uh, to get to that point has been incredibly difficult incredibly hard but it didn't happen uh you have to get over it you need to tackle it because you want to keep going yeah all right good So one of my musician friends over here, he said, "Vishal, you should go to the Himalayas and try to find yourself, like a lot of other monks and people do." And I was like, "All right, cool." Uh, a month, a couple of weeks later, actually, I just decided that, "Hey, let's go to the Himalayas, go ice skating on those frozen lakes over there." And we have some of the most beautiful frozen lakes in the world. And there is this community of ice hockey players in the Himalayas, also in Ladakh, uh, who will understand me, and they did. So it was like the for them, it was the most natural thing I did when I was there. like this guy is ice skating very good speed skating or even better uh that's it and one thing led to another you know i've been rejected by 120 companies for sponsorships for elite ice skating pursuing the winter olympic goal but for this adventure sport adventure ice skating like going and ice skating on nature ice i found three backers i called five people three of them said yes one a small way or a big way doesn't matter like three of them said yes directly and i was like whoa i'm on to something <laughs> so that gave birth like you know in disappointment without disappointment there cannot be victory so in this disappointment i was able to create a, a new industry itself where uh, you basically and that's what in europe they do they go ice skating on frozen lakes and rivers anyways in the winter so but i like well let's do it at 4500 meters or you know 4000 meters so that was a different aspect altitude so ladakh is at 3000 meters lay is at 3000 meters and then from there on you build up So yeah, basically the idea was to go and ice skate on frozen lakes, which are some of the highest frozen lakes in the world. The Pangong Lake first. Uh, a year later, I came back to go ice skating on Somoriri Lake, which is at 4,523 meters. And we made a round over there on the lake, like we cleaned the ice with the local villagers, and we made a round. And there was a five kilometer, five kilometers in official Olympic distance. Like you know what, this is what I'm going to do. And yeah, that's what we did. The world's highest five kilometers, unofficially. 
but it was there we, we did it and yeah that's it so <clears throat> i think that whole journey that whole process uh took me closer back to india more and more to the people over there uh i got back to my roots or skating roots also skating roots are on frozen lakes have been coming from there so yeah and the thrill obviously it is adventurous and it is nice and you're going when no one has ever been there even the locals did not they thought i was insane to go ice skating on sumori and they're like when you go to take permits like what are you going to do that sumori like we're going to go ice skating yeah but in winter like it's minus 40 there like yeah, yeah we'll figure it out all right cool go so it is it's just that you know i think and as soon as you know what you want to do there are two right. things happen happening you make a lot of people around you very nervous as soon as you know what you want to do with your life you make a lot of people uh, around you very nervous and you get a lot of people also to back you <laughs> because people want to back people with backbones so you know so there are these two things which happen that's it and you have to right. realize which is what when what and when so right yeah wow mm. so after so much of thought and thought provoking conversation i'm going to yeah. ask us uh, ask you to give us uh, a few uh, facts of ice skating um yeah which we don't know yeah okay a uh, few facts all right i can start uh i'm not the only and the first uh, long track ice skater that's for sure uh i do have 65 national records uh the sport i do is long track speed skating uh which happens on a 400 meter track uh it is very much uh, very much in the nature of speed skating in holland is like it is second nature to them uh it is one of the most hardest sports to qualify for for the olympics it is because mm -hmm. it was it is a traditional sport so it is been there since the first winter olympics were made you know were founded wow. so it's like 100 meter running you know 100 meter running was the only running sport running was 100 meter running was the only event which happened in the first olympics so similarly when winter olympics started it was one of the only sports in there one of the few sports which is, so it is one of the most hardest sports to qualify for you need 10 to 15 years to prepare qualify and then another 10 years to perform uh yeah uh, there is it is it is as i said the difficult sport it is uh, extremely thrilling we go at speeds at 50 km 60 km per hour on the corner without a helmet uh yeah uh, norway netherlands sweden uh are some of the countries which are very good at it canada and america come close fourth fifth in the whole situation uh yeah i hope yeah. to be able to bring well, the sport to india at some point you will uh, um, we are, uh, we are very hopeful and uh, yeah. we are very sure that uh, you know uh, there are so many people out there and so many individuals out there who definitely yeah. choose going beyond uh, going yeah. beyond what's kind of available um so mm -hmm. yes thank you so much for being uh, on the yeah. show with us it, it's been thank extremely you. insightful uh, mm -hmm. there is a lot that we've kind of learned um mm -hmm. however before you leave mm -hmm. what would be one tip that you give um to aspiring sports players be it winter sport huh? be it be it a sport, no, no, sports sport. in general i think i think in we need first need in general like uh yeah believing in yourself i think it's the big basic beginning of things like if you don't trust in yourself if you don't believe in yourself you can never do anything and uh, and that is the stepping stone of yeah your your journey and uh and believing in yourself beyond reason means believing in your goals believing in your abilities uh when no one else does i think that's it and that will get you through thank you thank you so much thank you for so much. this uh, yeah. and thank you so much for this conversation vishwaraj we really yes. really really uh, hope to see you back with uh, so many more medals and laurels for india for yourself and for all of us um thank you and thank you everyone for uh, being on the show with with me every time with a new guest uh, someone who always inspires us someone who brings his life or her life uh, to us from which we have much to take back from please continue watching liking subscribing and supporting across all media uh, channels to go beyond sports and me sonali gupta thank you mm -hmm.